Hi, in our work we we'll look at machine learning models that learn to detect and repair bugs in real-life code. Finding and fixing bugs in code, such as the one shown here in green, is a task that requires strong reasoning capabilities and is hard to perform just by learning to mimic existing code. For example, here, by reading the comment over the code, we understand the developer intended to truncate the variable name when it was too long. Instead, the code performs a no op more generally, the intent of the developer is partially observed through the code's formal structure, but also through the ambiguous natural language found in code comments and programming language identifiers. In the example in the slide, the operator in green should have been a greater than. At the same time, it is really hard to find large quantities of data with annotated real-life bugs, which limits many of the current machine learning approaches. Due to this, most existing approaches resort on training on randomly inserted bugs. However, randomly introduced bugs has many problems. For example, changing the concatenation operator here, let's say from a plus to a minus, will introduce an obvious bug that most machine learning models will be able to detect. However, understanding that this comparison operator should not be less or equal than but greater than is a much harder problem and is something where we hope that machine learning models could learn. To tackle the problems that arise from datasets with randomly inserted bugs, we present BugLab, a self-supervised approach for bug detection and repair. BugLab is composed of two competing submodels, a bug selector and a bug detector. During training, the bug selector accepts a code snippet from our unlabeled training set, assumed to be correct. It then selects the location and concrete form of a bug to introduce, if any. For example, a selector may decide to change a plus to a minus, or to change a variable usage from J to I, or to leave the code snippet untouched. These bugs may look simple, but are usually hard to detect. When the selector picks an action, we rewrite the code. Then, the bug detector model tries to learn to locate and fix the inserted bug, if one was inserted. The selector and detector models are trained together. Note that the selector makes discrete edits in the code text, thus we need to use sampling from the discrete set of rewrites during the training process. At test time, the bug detector is used to locate and fix bugs, and the selector is discarded. First, let's focus on the selector and detector. Each one of them accepts some representation of code, and it has to find the location where the code will be rewritten, and then decide what rewrites to make. The selector and detector models can be implemented using the same architecture, but are trained using different objectives. How does learning happen? There are many potential options here, but we opt for a max-min objective. The selector needs to introduce bugs that are hard for the detector. The detector needs to find these bugs and apply the inverse rewrite to beat the selector. Note that this framework resembles GANs, but the code rewrites are non-differentiable, discrete operations. So, now that I've discussed the high-level idea, let's look at one implementation of BugLab for Python. First, we opt for a few kinds of simple rewrites shown here. According to research in software engineering, these bugs are quite common and consist of around 10% of the small bug fixes. These rewrites may be, appear simple on the surface, but humans have a hard time detecting them in the vast amounts of code. For example, we might decide to replace a variable usage. That, for example, we have a variable i and j that are both in scope, and we swap i with j. This is a quite common bug, especially in copy-paste scenarios. We might replace a binary operator, like a plus to a minus or a times. We might replace a Boolean operator, an or with an and, or an and with an or, and so on. We could replace comparison operators like equals to not equals, greater than, less than, less than or equal, and so on. Yet another big class of bugs that happen. We can also replace literals or swap the arguments of a function. So this is a small set of 
rewrites, not all these kinds of rewrites appear in Backlab, and in the future we certainly hope to expand this list, but these the rewrites here cover a large set of realistic bugs that happen in source code. The next question is how to represent source code. Simplistic representations of code that represent it as a sequence of tokens are not suitable here and have been shown to underperform. Instead, we want to exploit the rich, unknown structure of the code. To do so, we map entities in the program, such as tokens, expressions, non-terminal symbols, symbols, to nodes, and the relationships among those nodes with edges. We include a large set of simple-to-extract relationships among these entities, such as data flow, syntactic information, control flow information, and so on. Finally, we're going to represent these graphs with either graph neural networks, GNNs, or relational transformers. As I mentioned before, the detector and selector are symmetric models. We use the following neural architecture for each one of them. The graph representation is passed into a graph neural network or a relational transformer that have shown state-of-the-art performance. The outputs of these components are then used by the localization module, which is a pointer-like network pointing to the location of a rewrite or a special location to indicate that the snippet should be left intact. The same outputs of the GNN or the relational transformer are passed to a rewrite module that for a given location can decide the concrete rewrite, for example, to change a plus to a minus or a multiplication. Again, this is the same architecture for a selector applying a rewrite to introduce a bug and a detector applying a rewrite to remove a bug. We test a Python implementation of Buglab on two test sets. First, a test set of around 700,000 randomly generated bugs. And also, we create a small test set of around 2,000 real life bugs found on projects on the Python package index called PyPyBugs. This is a dataset we manually created with real bugs by traversing the commit history of these projects. We use this dataset as a tested only and we release it for further use by the research community. We evaluate our models on both datasets. Our evaluation showed that training models using Buglab improves the performance over simple supervised learning on random bugs. At the same time, we observe that the performance on real-life PyPy bugs is much worse compared to random bugs, suggesting ample opportunity to improve in the future. You can see in the random bugs case, we have a uh, localization and repair accuracy of around 70%, but on the PyPy bugs, the real bugs, we have just 26%. For a more detailed discussion of our results and many more ablations, please look at our paper and its appendices. Finally, we manually inspect 1,000 warnings raised from our model. There, we find a large false positive rate, which offers many future opportunities for improvement. At the same time, we find and report 19 previously unknown bugs in open source projects on GitHub. One of them is shown here. The developer probably copy-pasted line 65 and created a variable misuse error, which was undetected for quite some time. Buglab was able to locate and fix this bug, suggesting that instead of write partitions, the read partitions variable should have been used. To conclude, we have presented a framework for self-supervised bug detection repair. Through that framework, we can train better neural models that find bugs in code. Still, there are many important research opportunities ahead towards practical bug detection and repair with deep learning. For more information, please join our poster session or look at the paper. Thank you.